last week on The Pulse. This is another chance to play the game. Beat SMU on three, one, two, three. Broke another tackle foot race, got a chance to score, he will. Let's make sure this week we come ready to roll. Much like it was last week, you get to play in front of basically your home crowd coming from the DFW area. How excited are you about that, too? Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I mean, I get another chance to be back in Dallas, and that's always cool. Um, and I know my parents have they don't have to travel too far to come see me, so that's good. For the second straight week, the Aggies are heading to the Metroplex. It's a homecoming for several, including quarterback Kenny Hill. AT&T Stadium is already a familiar venue to him, so is the big stage. He grew up watching his father, Ken Sr., on it and on the mound in major league ballparks for years. It's funny because after, after the games, all the kids get to come in the clubhouse. So he's running around in the clubhouse and eating food and Gatorade and bubble gum. So it was, it was normal for him. I do remember going to games and chilling in the clubhouse and getting to watch him, which was really cool. And then doing all the stuff with like the other players' kids and stuff like that. I remember all that. Baseball's always been the sport that he played. I mean, that's all we did. I've always been, I was always like a big hitter, just loved to play the game. And I mean, I think that's where it really started. Football, I just kind of played because all my friends played in South Lake. And I've all, I always loved baseball. And then probably when I got to eighth grade, it kind of started to switch. The transition sent him to high school stardom at prestigious South Lake Carroll. Then it was on to Texas A&M, where this August he competed for the starting job at quarterback. When it got down to the last couple weeks, uh, I, I mean, I just told him, I said, physically, you, you, you're strong. But I said, now you're in a situation now it becomes a mental grind. So mentally, you gotta be, you gotta grind it out and keep competing. I mean, the, the best guy's gonna win it. I talked to him every day. He was down at practice the last couple weeks, uh, like Tuesdays and Thursdays sometimes, but he was down here a lot. And so, I mean, it was good to get to, to have him around all the time. Decision made. It is Kenny Hill that will take the first snaps of the Texas A&M football season. Going into the game, he was locked in. I mean, he, he, he had it all going. Middle. Beautiful toss. Touchdown. Aggies score on their first drive. In case you were wondering if this environment was going to be too big for the sophomore quarterback, he just strolls in and leads this team right down the field. I knew he would play well, but I didn't think he'd throw for 500. I like having that pressure on me. I don't really, I don't feel it really. But just knowing, like, it kind of rides on me, I, like, feed off of that. And, I mean, I think it helps me stay more focused in the games and stuff like that to have all the burden on my shoulders. Like I tell him, there's no moment that's too big. So you want to be in those situations with the ball in your hand and whether you, you, you lose or win, it's always a learning curve at, at both instances. So, yeah, the Hill's got to have the ball in the hand. And now here we are. Uh, the doorstep of this game is Jerry Well this weekend. Arkansas is very physical. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. They can run the ball. Aggies like throw the ball. It's a clash of styles. The Pulse. Texas A&M football is presented by AT&T. Building you a better network. We had a great experience in Columbia, South Carolina, and then we've kind of gotten our feet back underneath us. Now we've got to go back up to Dallas in, in a, a real atmosphere. It's going to be a great place to play. 
uh, be loud in there and, and uh, play an Arkansas team that's, uh, that's really clicking on all cylinders right now is real dangerous. You gotta start fast, set the tone early. All right, take advantage of every opportunity you got. All right, it's all about us in this room. We're gonna keep proving people wrong every single week. All right, defense, just like Coach Spaz said, we have to start fast as well. We gotta start fast as a team. It's no secret, we gotta stop the running game. Do what we do. Execute the game plan, we'll stop the running game. Good eyes in the back end, no explosives. When they get in the red zone, make them kick field goals. Gotta take <laughs> the ball away today. Have to take the ball away today. I, I so look forward to watching you guys play. And now here we are. Uh, the doorstep of this game is Jerry Wilde this weekend. Arkansas is very physical. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. They can run the ball. Aggies like throw the ball. It's a clash of styles. Um, obviously, this week's game is going to be huge against the uh, against Arkansas's rushing attack. How does A&M hold up physically? This is one of the more intriguing games of the weekend, unquestionably. A return to SEC play and the raising of the curtain on the drama that is to unfold in the Western Division, where all but one team is in the top 25. Arkansas is the lone squad on the outside looking in, but a win over the Aggies on this day will grant them a welcome invitation to the rankings and the national scene. Trey Williams, deep for the Aggies. Returnable from the goal line. Good block on the right side. Hauled out of bounds by the kicker. Adam McFain saved a bunch. Four-man rush, a screen pass right side. That's called by, caught by Josh Reynolds. Number 11, Brandon Williams. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Going to throw, going sideline, and it is a catch. Arkansas across midfield. A snap, tailback got it. He hits, he's going to score. It's a touchdown. Arkansas will score. And they are an extra point away from tying the game up. The Aggies struck first. Arkansas struck right back. The tone was set, and the slugfest could commence. First down. And it's a man, they're at the 20, they're inside the 20, he's at the five, and he just scored. The difference in the ball game a 51 yard run for a touchdown on a fake punt. They scored on the first drive. Offense then hit a little bit of a low, but did they get better late in the first half? Yeah, you know, we had a lot of things happen, uh, you know, special teams wise, all that. All that momentum and, and we're only down a touchdown. We just got to settle down, make some plays. Reverse. Well, funny. It's a funny call. Derby. Yeah, sure was. Make him work to get open. Good eye control. Good job. Let's see if we can go Play fake. Allen looks deep, wide open. A.J. Derby touchdown. I need you. I need you. I'm going to take you. Keep playing. Okay. And it brings to a close quarter number three. Only a quarter to go here. The Aggies are trailing 28 to 14. And Arkansas is on the move.
This segment of The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Bud Light, the perfect beer when you're up for whatever. As the late afternoon light started to peek into AT&T Stadium, the Aggies were down 14 in the fourth quarter. It was time to shine, or else championship hopes were about to grow dim. If you're going to have a chance to come back in this game, down two touchdowns, you're in the fourth quarter, the A&M defense has to now make the play. Jonathan Williams spins, still up, still up, down at the one. It's coming back, I think. Flag at the 45. Personal foul, tripping, number 76, offense. 15-yard penalty, you play first half. Hand off Collins, and Arkansas will punt. Here's Ken Hill, deep down the middle, and he's got him wide open. Edward Pope, the defender fell down. The Aggies have scored on an 87-yard touchdown pass. Hey, let's go do our job. Let's go get three down. Let's go take a We can't let up. We cannot let up. Collins goes left. Uh, Nothing behind. there. Yep. DeShazer Everett. Left side. How about this? Back to back great defensive plays. It's funny how fast the game can shift. Aggie defense holds. Hey, nice job. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hill dances up, goes deep, got a man down there. It is picked off, intercepted. Carol Washington. They make this field goal, they feel they can win the football game. John Henson kicks it. It's going to be wide left. Aggies have a chance. 2.29 to go. AM out of timeouts, trailing by seven. Three wide left, two wide right. Four man Arkansas rush. Wide open. Oh my gosh. Josh Reynolds. Touchdown, Aggies. Tie game. Who'd have thunk it? Man over. Man over. Play action. Uh -oh. oh my gosh, uh -oh. it was read perfectly by Howard Matthews. And so, fourth down. Played 60 in Arlington. It is the end of regulation. First down 10 at the 25. Deep down the middle, got him. Malcolm Kennedy touchdown. Fake it, go. Got him. They must get the touchdown and the extra point. Jonathan Williams gets the handoff. Stopped after a gain of two and a half. Second down, toss. Williams. Oh, Miles. Third down. The freshman, Miles Garrett, makes the play. Into the flat, caught. Short of the first down. Alex Collins is the running back. He's got blockers to the left. They give it to him. He stopped. Aggies win. No, no. We ain't gonna never 
This segment of The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Pepsi. Now is what we make it. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get out there and live it. It's time to live for now. You guys played your asses off. I'm proud of you. You came through some adversity. Listen, that's how you get better. When you have to play through that, that's how you get better. We learned a lot tonight. Would y'all agree? Yes, sir. We learned a lot. We always keep playing. Take it down for it, man. I got the Excited in victory, DeShazer Everett is in no mood to dance. After making 16 tackles with a banged up shoulder for some of them, he wouldn't have much pep in his step. Was this about as grueling a game as you've been through? Coach, Coach actually before the game, he said, how tough are you? And what's your pride level? And I told him 10 to both of them. And you know, I, even though I got hurt, I know I had to come back and play for the team because I feel like they do the same for me. You know, once you're in the game, the adrenaline's pumping and you really don't worry about things. So. I just got back in the game and you know, tried to ignore all the pain and just keep playing. His last of the 16 stops sealed the win. <laughs> it was really Obi. He stepped up and you know, stopped the guy. And I was kind of just a jump on pile type of guy. <laughs> so two made the last tackle, but it took commitment from everyone on defense to stop the Razorback ground game from start to finish. We warned everybody that all 11 guys were going to have to tackle. Coming out of the halftime break, um, especially in the fourth quarter. Our guys are calling out what running plays are coming. Uh, had a good feel for when they were going to go play action pass. So as the game got going, uh, I felt like our guys adjusted very well, and, and it showed again in the fourth quarter. And as Kevin Sumlin often says, it took all phases at all times, even overtime. What a great, great, not good, a great team victory. Yeah. It took everybody. It took offense. Yeah. It took special teams. Yeah. It took defense. Yeah. Okay, Kenny, if you'll have a seat up here, please. We'll take the first question. By the way, congratulations first, and then we'll take the first question for Kenny. We've got a question on the second row, left-hand side. Yeah, Kenny, what did y'all prove today as a team? That we can compete with people in the SEC. Uh, I mean, we didn't play our best today, but, I mean, we still competed and came out with a win. And, uh, I mean, shoot, for me, I think, I think that just shows us uh, more than anything, like, we can come back from a deficit like that and we can still come out with a win. We just got to keep fighting. Doing all the stuff that you believe in. Aggieland, we see it's top season. season. I do it for the fam, that's the reason. The reason. I'm a rune, I'm a blood, I'm bleeding. 